Hello, and welcome to my talk, Do It Live, Fitbit Zero to Downtime Migration to GCP. I'm Sean Michael Lewis. I'm Principal Software Engineer at Fitbit, and I was in charge of moving our monolithic application from our legacy managed hosting to Google Cloud Platform. Today's talk, I'm going to talk about what was unique or what we felt was unique about Fitbit's migration challenge. Um, we're going to talk about how we thought about users in making decisions to move uh, for our migration. Uh, then we'll talk about the technology and processes that we added and affected to make this happen. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how it went, uh, which was quite well. And then we'll have some takeaways that we think could be useful for you should you be moving from uh, another cloud provider or your own managed hosting into Google Cloud Platform. So like many companies, Fitbit started with a monolithic application. We had a single binary that did all the things. Uh, it is quite large. It does. It handles all of our traffic, or it did for a long time. And, over, and then we started to break it up into what we call microservices. It's pretty pretty standard when a company matures. But um, while moving microservices might be quite easy, each service can do its own thing, move its own data store, figure things out, and move into the cloud. Uh, the monolith is much more challenging. It's a it's a more challenging. Uh, it's bigger, meatier. It takes up about 70% of our traffic. So moving it was quite hard. Uh, so our migration wasn't going to happen until the monolith moved. So let's talk about our monolith. Uh, like I said, it's a single Java binary, uh, about 1,000 instances, backed by around 200 MySQL instances. Uh, those MySQL instances are mostly sharded by user data. So if a request comes in, uh, I can get all of my data from one shard. Uh, we have a sharding library that manages the shards. Uh, so it can, allows you, it figures out where users go when new users sign up. It, figure, it allows you to expand and contract the uh, number of MySQL instances we have. And it also handles caching, for which we had around 400 nodes of memcache. We also have Kafka, where we do asynchronous processing, and those messages are largely processed by other instances within the monolith. So we'll talk about, uh, yeah, we'll talk about our users now. Uh, now that we know what the application looks like, we thought about what it would look like for us to move and who we should be thinking about as we're moving. The most important stakeholder in the move is your users. Uh, sometimes doing the best thing for your users is not the most easy thing technically, but that should be the thing you do first or the person you think about first. So how do we get to GCP with our users in mind? We thought about two different ways of doing this. One was to do it progressively. So move user by user or batch of user by batch of user, or we could do it all at once. Uh, there are different pros and cons to each. For the progressive, we thought that anything bad that happened in the new environment as we were moving, uh, any new challenge that we experienced in our new, in our new home, would be limited to only the mover users that have moved. So it's to be a smaller impact uh, overall to our user base as we figured out things in the new environment. Uh, secondly, like outside of you know normal availability problems, like just how our applications handle load in the new environment would be able to be observed in a more gradual fashion. We could see how the environment uh, uh, dealt with new load in a more measured way. Uh, we knew that uh, network calls, we wouldn't be able to make every network call be in the new data in the new data center in GCP. So we would have to go back to the old data center sometimes, and that would incur a lot of latency. That's not a great user experience, but it's uh, you know one of the downsides of this approach. And then lastly, we'd have to operate two full uh, uh, application stacks uh, simultaneously, be able to operate them at the same time and. Uh, and manage them at the same time uh, in two data centers and two different hosting idioms for us. Uh, on the contrary, the all at once solution, uh, any challenges you have in the new environment, when you cut over the new environment, it affects everyone. So if uh, you have a big outage, everyone's down. Uh, if uh, th It's basically a total system shock. Uh, there's a lot of risk in that. Uh, you can do a lot of testing beforehand, but you don't know what's really going to happen until you flip the switch. Uh, the positive is that once you're in the new data center, all of your network calls are, are local, so your latency situation is as good as it's going to be. Uh, and while you don't have to maintain and operate two data centers at the same time, uh, you need the old one on standby in case something goes wrong in the move. So you're not really uh, getting rid of the old one when you cut over, at least uh, until you're fully in. So which one did we choose? Uh, 
uh, we felt that overall, thinking of the users in mind, that the progressive uh, migration was going to be much better for them. Uh, on average, most users wouldn't experience any downtime or any noticeable downtime. Uh, that took some work, but uh, we thought that if we could, you know, slowly roll into GCP, we would give our users the best experience and maybe even one they don't notice. So as we were thinking about how we're going to do this progressive migration, we had to think about, uh, you know, what are the things we want out of it? How are we going to do it? And how, what are going to be our guiding principles? So the first one was to make our best effort to route users to the environment where their data is resident. Um, as I said, we shard our data all by user. So if, uh, if I move my data from our old hosting to GCP, I should start routing my requests to GCP. Uh, that was the goal of, of, of this migration is to uh, move the user with the data. Uh, we wanted to make sure that let's say we didn't route correctly and my data is in GCP, but I got routed to the old data center. Well, that should still work. We still want that to be an experience. We don't want to be throwing errors when we have a misroute. So we want an experience no matter what. We want to be able to move users to GCP, but if things aren't going well, we need to be able to move them back. Um, and we also need to be able to use move at variable speed. If things are going great, we should be able to move users more quickly. If they're not going so well, or we're not sure, we should trickle them in and get our sea legs, as it were. Um, lastly, as we're making these decisions about fast, slow, forward, backwards, we don't want to be making a lot of like gut check decisions. We want to be able to look at a chart and say, we're meeting our SLOs. We're going to have to move forward now. Um, and so we actually need to develop more SLOs and, and have a better handle on them before we could do this appropriately. Let's talk about the timeline for this migration. So as I said, we wanted to move users slow and, and quickly at different varying times. But before that, we needed to actually set everything up in GCP and make sure uh, it was working. Uh, and you can always run tests, but until you're really routing production users there, uh, it's, not, it's not real. So the first users that we routed were employees. We routed them through GCP. All their data was still in our old data center. They had slow experiences, but at the beginning, a lot of things were broken, but we fixed bugs until we had a complete experience. And all the meaningful experiences that happen uh, in Fitbit uh, were serviceable by going through GCP and uh, even if data was in another data center. Once we felt confident in that, we decided it was time to start moving paying customers. So we started moving users slowly in a, in a slow trickle. And we got to watch as our systems uh, took on that new traffic and make sure that we were able to operate and monitor and really, you know, make sure that things were working in GCP. Then once we got a lot of confidence, we started moving users in big batches. We moved them quickly uh, and, as you'll see, uh, quicker than we even anticipated. So how did we change our architecture and technology to make this kind of move possible? Um, as you'll see on the left, I have the same uh, diagram for our monolithic architecture uh, for our legacy data center. We replicated that in Google Cloud Platform, so the whole thing up. We had fewer application instances at the start, and fewer MySQL instances, but uh, and those MySQL instances were empty when we started as well uh, because they had no data in them. There was no data in GCP yet. Uh, and then we had connections from all the application instances to all the MySQLs in both the old data center and in GCP. So it was fully connected between those th two data centers between application instances. Those are the blue lines you'll see. The application instances go to, um, th those are the lines that we had to add. We had to add connections back to the old data center from GCP and to GCP from the old data center. Then we added edge routing as well. This was the logic that would allow us to route uh, users based on where they lived. So we had to be able to push that logic somewhere. Uh, it turns out we use Cloudflare, which is a CN, uh, CDN and DNS provider. Uh, they had a, pr a product called uh, Cloudflare Workers that we were able to push logic up into and make these decisions. And I'll talk more about that later. But that made it so that we didn't have to go into one data center to decide that we really want to service it out of the other one and kick it back and redirect. Um, it made everything much cleaner um, and easier to observe as well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we have uh, connectivity between our memcached instances. Uh, you'll notice that the app in this diagram, the applications only talk to their data center local, local memcached. But uh, if one application, if, if one data center makes a change to its local memcached, 
we want that change to be replicated to the other one. And so we introduced a, a, a proxy that would allow us to echo invalidations to the other data center. I'll talk about that as well. First, we'll talk about moving users. Um, I said we had uh, initially empty databases in GCP and all of our, our full databases in our legacy data center. Um, in our sharding scheme, we have this notion of buckets. Uh, buckets have users in them. Uh, mostly, uh, th there's only really two ways to do uh, sharding. Uh, there's buckets and there's uh, ID ranges. We use buckets, it's kind of like a hashing scheme, but it allows us to move an individual bucket uh, one at a time. So we can move one bucket to any other database server. So when we were moving into GCP, we could move one bucket from a database server that lived in our old data center and then move it to GCP. Now the users have been moved. This is the slow method of movement. It takes about 20 minutes because there's a lot of locking involved. Uh, users can still read their data, but they can't write for that 20 minutes. It's slow and gradual. We can add parallelism to get a little bit more speed, so we can do many buckets at a time. Uh, but we can't really move uh, tons of users at, at once. To move fast, we will move the whole shard. And this is a typical uh, replication strategy, which is that our, our leader database would be in our old data center. We'd have a replica uh, of it in uh, GCP. At some point, we would flip uh, who the leader was and make the leader uh, the one in GCP. Now all the users on that shard, all those buckets have shifted all at once. And that is a very fast thing. It takes about five minutes. Uh, it can go back and forward. Both of them are bi-directional, which is important for our, our use case. I'll talk a little bit about routing. As I said, uh, Cloudflare workers is the technology we use uh, to uh, provide some logic. Uh, as to where our user uh, traffic should be routed. So uh, we have this idea of buckets, as I told you about. There's a finite number of buckets. In fact, the number was finite enough that we could make a big map of it and push that, that map uh, in a, a JavaScript binary up to this Cloudflare worker. We could also put a whitelist in there, which allowed us is how we were able to route um, employees before paying customers. So regardless of where your data is resident, we could say, oh, this user should always go to GCP no matter what, no matter where their data is. Otherwise, uh, see where their bucket lives. So this is the flow diagram. Um, we have time deployments of the logic, the code that, that executes the logic, but also the data that feeds that logic. Uh, it gets time to deploy into, into Cloudflare. Um, then the logic is simply, is the user in the whitelist? If so, send them to GCP. If not, check where their bucket lives. Is the bucket in GCP? If yes, send them to GCP. If not, or we have some kind of error or there's no user information, send them to the legacy data center. Eventually, once we had more than 50% movement into GCP, we made the default GCP. The last technical aspect was keeping the caches coherent. As I said, uh, applications only talk to their local caches. Um, and if the other data center changes the cache on their side, you want it to be reflected in both places. So we introduced a new piece of technology, uh, McRouter, an open source memcache proxy that has the ability to echo, echo deletes and other operations to other data centers or other clusters of memcache nodes. Uh, our second cluster just happened to be the other, the other data center. Uh, so uh, we uh, this was a pre pretty pretty challenging for us, although it's a uh, pretty straightforward and it's a good tool. And we don't think a lot about it now. Uh, There's a stark difference from implementing the routing from before. The routing being a managed service ended up being really easy for us to do. Uh, it gave us very few headaches. We had very few incidents around it. Uh, whereas in introducing a new piece of technology just before you make a big move was much more challenging. It ended up working out for us, but uh, it started to show us the differences between uh, what might be possible when we have more managed services at our disposal. So how did this all go? It actually went quite well, um, better than I think any of us expected. Uh, we, uh, the routing of employees before everyone else uh, uncovered many critical bugs. So it uncovered around 60 bugs. We closed 58 of them before we moved to a paying customer. And I think those other two got closed as uh, won't fix. They didn't end up being that critical. Uh, so uh, really everything that was really blocking an experience in GCP 
uh, was closed before we were able to do it. And we did that like live. We were did it in production. I mean, we tested it in production without affecting our, our paying customers, uh, which was super awesome. Um, and then we also finished early. We, we had a pretty hard deadline to be out at a certain time. Uh, and we started this process. If you look at the left of this graph, uh, you'll see that uh, there's a very slow, tr a very low trickle of information uh, of throughput going to GCP, which is the green line. And you'll see that it slowly steps up over time. And then around uh, the end of August or 8:30 on this chart, you'll see it takes a big step up, and then it takes some other bigger steps up and stays high. Uh, we, uh, you know, based on our SLOs, we were able to see that we were doing well. Everything was kind of under control. And that we can really push this uh, uh, migration faster and, and get done sooner than we expected, which was uh, super exciting for everyone. So what are the takeaways from this process? Uh, progressive migrations based on user, da user data locality can provide the best user experience for your users most of the time. Um, you pro if you have a sharded monolith like we do, you probably have some sort of uh, user sharding or something like that. Um, and so if you can do it little by little, that's going to be the best bang for your buck. Uh, your movement should have options, both direction, both uh, speed and direction. It gives you flexibility for when things go wrong or things go really well. Um, decide what is really good or really well based on your SLOs. Um, and then also, uh, we found that this was the first opportunity for us, uh, having been in our own colo, to use managed services uh, and really see the benefit of them. Now that we're in Google Cloud Platform, we think there's a lot more opportunities for us to do that. So uh, if you there are opportunities to use them in your migration, I would, ex I would, I would say you should. That's all. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope your migration goes well as well.